Wow. There was that freaking idea. Oh, wait. I wonder if I can see that on YouTube. Boo, YouTube. Hi, right, folks. Right now, I'm very angry. Almost hate-filled. Hobo, I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I don't think this time I can honestly say I tried not to do bad stuff. But I got a copyright suspension again for 90 days. Because New Japan Pro Wrestling does not want to promote in America or anywhere else around the world their promotion. Even though I didn't show the whole thing, I think they zonked me because I showed a total of three minutes of clips between two different nights. It's so hard to be a wrestling fan. You're ridiculed. People say it's fake. Internet hates you. With the exception of AAA. AAA is the last bastion of hope for people like me. And I'd like to give a shout out to the whole effing show. Kevin Scampoli. Everything you've said about wrestling is, is true. Yes. We do need to see more nudes. And dick. Well, no, we can go without that. But the Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch sex tape. I can live with that. But, yep, I'm on my 90 suspension. So the next time I'll be able to live stream will probably be for WrestleMania, which is terrible because there's. Impact's normally pretty good about their policies. New Japan shut fucks. I don't know. Is it worth staying up and beating up my body for New Japan Pro Wrestling? Because you know New Japan's no longer available in, here in the U.S. Because I think the deal was, from what I've heard from... Reliable sources, hearing from reliable sources, that Access canceled New Japan Pro Wrestling's TV deal, mainly because New Japan wouldn't work with Impact. That's a whole other can of worms. But this New Japan AEW thing, oh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. It'll be interesting. I know I won't be able to see it Wednesday, but I know John Moxley has the IWGP US title. I wonder if he'll bring that to AEW. We'll see. John Moxley is his own thing. I can't feel bad for John Moxley is doing what he's. I still like John Moxley. I still like pro wrestling. I still like some of the people in pro wrestling. It's just I don't know. It would be one thing if I, if I showed the whole thing for free. And if it was <laughs> and if it was during like USA primetime, I guess. I know that's no defense, but I'm not making it fun anymore. If there wasn't impact live shows sometimes the WWE. WWE though. You, you too contribute to the issues. Ring of Honor, meh. Chikara, eh, it's lost its, lo lost its luster. I wonder if Stardom... <laughs> I wonder if Stardom has such copyright rules. I might be reduced to doing live streams of just Stardom and AAA. AAA can be fun, though. Oh, shit. Am I going to miss? I have to be someone good. I think. So I definitely don't want to get another strike and be stuck until August. Because I do want to show you 
my YouTube audience triple mania because that's amazing. Um, you're gonna miss Ray D. Reyes? I don't know. I forget. I honestly forget when that show is. I know nothing about Triple Mania besides, well, well, Triple A besides Triple Mania. And they have clowns shooting fire like six inches away from people. Which is shocking itself. But, so. Sorry, folks. And Lola Fajini, yes, you can. I'll still make my own uh, Daytona Beach Bun Bun Fight League stuff. And JT, I do plan. <laughs> whenever work allows me to go on the whole effing show one day. Maybe we'll see. Well, not Wednesday. But if it work. I don't know. I'll definitely get on eventually, though. If not, thank you for staying in touch. Please tell Kevin Scampoli I feel his pain when they try to show, like, 10-second clips of WWE stuff. New Japan, you can't show a minute and a half. All I wanted to see was 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 the Tokyo Pimps chick's butt. So perfect, but oh well. That's my answer. Right? It's just getting hard to be a wrestling fan nowadays. Everything's and YouTube's not helping it. I know YouTube's gone against wrestling shows for the most for to some degree. They've lightened up their stance. A little bit, but YouTube have have been bastards, especially when they cut out fight perfect. Boom, son. That was fun to watch, and then they like said, "No, you can't do that anymore." But it's fight perfect. I don't know. YouTube's it used to be cool to be on YouTube. I guess I'm just old now. That's not good. Well, enough about feeling depressed. But that, I'll still do my reaction shows like I am right now um, for Mardi Gras. It'll be the next Daytona Beach Bum Fight League special. I'm trying to think. Then it's Easter. And we'll figure stuff out from there. I mean, yeah, after Easter. Yeah, before Easter. I should be able to live stream. I just, I can't do any of the cool stuff anymore, guys. I'm sorry. I will still remain here on YouTube, though. Hobo Tom is now part of the YouTube community. Especially once I go to Jimmy Hart's bar here in, here in Daytona Beach. And somehow <laughs> weasel my way on the whole effing show. Or even like one or two questions or comments. Because actually I do appreciate Kevin Scampoli's work, he's honest, colorful, and he just tells it like it is. He doesn't care about what people think. And he's not oh, politically correct. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Kevin Scampoli, you sure get a double thumbs up from some hobo in Daytona. What can I tell you? Um, but good news, though. Again, I always like to do this. Jinrai Smith. You, sir. Thank you very much for your comments. It's always good to talk to you, talk to people out there. You, sir. Get the six count.
he goes for some air. I'm on the leg hook. Coming up. And let's see. Um, again, I'm sorry I'm on my 90 suspension. This is the only way you'll see me. I think this song songs sums it all up in nine seconds. God knows I'll get another, another copy strike, copyright strike. Let's try this. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. So... We'll see how that goes. Because, yeah, whatever. I have my wall of wrestling back there. With a door of wrestling. I still want to add to that. I don't think... I think the other bad thing... I've been checking dates for when NXT is coming back to town. Because, of because again, I, my friend did get amazing tickets. Check out my AEW YouTube. My AEW show that I did on YouTube. That was amazing. Um, I want to see if I can get front row tickets one day, show them what it's like at NXT. But I know the last NXT show here in Daytona Beach was not well received by Daytona Beach. Not because of the performer's fault, but because of the hookers and strippers and God knows what other types of people go to NXT shows here in Daytona Beach, with like few exceptions. So I'll tell you what, every so often, you will see that woman who who looks a little oh yeah, yeah how much did she get paid? But uh, I can't do anything else about that. Well, I've editing these, and I have to get to sleep, and I have to go to work, and I have to go figure out work. Ah, oh, so much stuff. But enough about that, though. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So let's see here. It starts off, Brock Lesnar is going to enter, enter first into the Royal Rumble. He's going to take on everyone. That's pretty cool. That means he's probably not going to walk away with a belt. I will be watching it. I will be doing an r r, &R show. Well, I will be doing a reaction show. Or, I don't know. No, it's a review show. Because I won't be live streaming. <laughs> Copyright. Nonsense, garbage. But I will be doing a review on the Royal Rumble. Also, also on Sunday, I'll be doing my review of the next Impact pay per view. I know the one big match, and I feel bad I can't do a live stream, but whatever. And by the way, I think to me. Uh, I'll give one last one one last answer, and then we'll talk more about Raw. But the two day Wrestle Kingdom seemed long. The undercard matches, especially when it related to faction warfare, were not good. Don't get me wrong, the upper card, the main event, oh, Okada and Naito, amazing. Chase, Switchblade, White, Kota Ibushi. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Kenta and, and Goto. Man, they should just have a shoot fight. Cause that's what it seemed like. That was also amazing. Dean Ambrose. Yes, sir. You're the most perfect agent. In New Japan Pro Wrestling. And Chris Jericho, the pain maker. Yep, he's keeping people. He's a gatekeeper for AEW from New Japan. But once they got, once they started to do the Bullet Club versus LIJ versus everyone, it, it just became a cluster mess. And there wasn't that much cursing during the tag team match. Only reason to watch GOD, the Girls of Destiny, is to see how many. Interesting ways they, they can call you chicken, mother, and a whole bunch of other combinations like saying eat 
and suck. Rip your head off, and I'm going to down your neck, and then we're going to your girlfriend, and she's going to five times, and she probably in her panties while she her mother because her mother is also one hot mother yeah that's what I was looking forward to turning G.O.D. matches not this time though oh wow I've been ranting and raving so with that um, also as far as New Japan goes if if Stephanie Mc, if if the McMahon's running New Japan because I guess a little bit over fifty fifty, I was in Stephanie McMahon's hand. That made me feel a little bit better. Oh, and what else was there? Something else. I forget though. That's okay. Where was I? I was talking about Brock Lesnar. He said he's not going to win. Um, and I got distracted. And then we have Sarah Schreiber back. He, she interviews Rey Mysterio. And the first match of the night. Oh, this was amazing, folks. I'll tell you what. Raw did a really good job of countering a lot of stuff New Japan Pro Wrestling did. Because we had Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Andrade. The only thing Andrade really needed is that he needed to wear his El Elo mask. Uh, this was just amazing, though. Um, there was a Lucha Libre sign. Someone knows that. That's pretty cool. And Seer. If is when. I mean, the thing is, with this match, and I'll get to it later, if this is what's to come, this year in WWE, WWE is going to be actually get back to where it should be. It's going to be good and fun to watch. The backstage things, eh, Lana. Oh. Wow, Lana. Even Bobby Lashley told so just shut up. But we'll get to that later. But this match was utterly amazing. Though. Uh, with this, uh, uh, there was a head scissors on the outside. So Rey Mysterio starts to mimic all the nasty heelish things that Andrade has done to previous opponents outside of the ring. And now Rey Mysterio is taking his receipt to Andrade for all that. Uh, he drilled him like head first. Like not even like like front of head. Like, to like literally like top of head. First into the steel depths. That was amazing. This match felt very fast paced. It also felt it felt long, but it was so well paced, it didn't feel long. Because I think I, when I looked on the clock, I'm like, whoa, that much time actually passed by? This was fun. It was, for the most part, constant action. Again, they do the wrestles with purpose, which is what I want to see. Uh, and then and then Ray started to do kicks. Whoa. And, of course, you have Lucha Libre. This is Lucha. They were chanting, like, Lucha Ole, 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 lucha, lucha, lucha. Sorry, my voice just went there. But yeah, you know what they're saying. When the crowd starts chanting in somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, for Lucha Libre, you know it's when they say lucha, lucha, lucha. You know, the crowd's into it. And therefore, I get into it, and I get excited and excited. And that's always good. Uh, he, hit the, he hit a reverse Canadian Destroyer. I don't even know how that's near physically impossible. But he did it, though. Um, there was a no-sell, which was great, because they got to the outside again. Uh, Ray did his kind of like belly flop thing. Andrade, like very L.I.J. stylish. Los Ingrabinoles Japan style. Kind of El Hilo. Like, just no sold it. And just did it instead of double knees to him. Again, there was a reverse Canadian destroyer, a Lucha destroyer. Zelina interferes. 
And because of her interference, Rey Mysterio went for the pin. Uh, Zelina Vega put Andrade's leg up on the rope. Referee said, no, nope, I'm sorry I missed it, but it's right there. We have to restart the match. I was like, oh, really? Like, Ray's not going to win, but this is, it was so good even afterwards, though. Because what happened, Zelina Vega got her come up and finally. Yes, because what happened is that Ray somehow got tossed into Zelina Vega. He was going to do a hurricanrana. He landed, however, on Zelina Vega. Ray, being the true face that he is, was more concerned about Zelina Vega's health and well-being versus the match that allowed Andrade to get the advantage, even though she really didn't interfere. And she probably deserved it of all the interfering that she's done in the past. But Arima Sierra is distracted, gets hammerlocked DDT. Wow, this was an amazing match. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Again, this was a filet mignon match. And let's see. So then we had um, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens going to recap. We did a recap what happened to them and a little interview with them. And we're going to see who their guest partner is. And then Seth. Seth Rollins has an interview. Yeah. I still call them the Architects of Pain. That's a better name. And WWE should take away all my copyright strikes if they choose to use that name. So next match. I was shocked at this that they did this. So they had all the background stuff. And we knew that it was going to be the Street Profits versus OC versus Viking Raiders. Because that's what was advertised. I was shocked. I'm like... Wait a second. This isn't the main event, or is this just the main event of Hour 1? Because I know at one time they would do that. I think WCW, as I'm reading the book, The um, Death of WCW, I'll have to show you guys that. Thank you, boss, for getting me that book for, for uh, Secret Santa. That's uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'll, I'll show you, and it'll go eventually probably next to the wall of wrestling somewhere once I'm done with it. But then I was shocked. I'm like, whoa, this is like the main event for hour one. It was the Street Profits taking on wah, 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 the club. Oh, the other thing is that there's no more Bullet Club music. Boo! New Japan Pro Wrestling. I want Bullet Club music. The only person who's still <laughs> somewhat <laughs> blindly, blindly a part of Bullet Club's for Chase Owens, the crown jewel. He's like super Bullet Club cheerleader. Um, wait a second. Then we had Viking Raiders again. Tate takes on all of them for the belt. Carl Anderson starts off the match. I'm sure he wishes well. He was in Bullet Club in New Japan. Trust me, Carl. Don't go back there. Go to AEW. Uh, but the, uh, him and Ivar start off the match. It's fun. Dawkins eventually tag himself in. I think that's the name of him. I was get, I was getting confused. Montez Ford. Uh, so Dawkins is there. He stands toe to toe. It's pretty good. A uh, Ford. Uh, Montez Ford eventually tags himself in. I'm probably getting their first name screwed up now. Uh, he goes toe to toe with them. Oh, it's so good though. Gal is definitely the big man of this match, and he carries himself as so. And the Viking Raiders. They were showing part of their New Japan Pro Wrestling heritage because they were just doing knee strikes. I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is about knee strikes in New Japan, but they like to, to hit people with their knees. This was also kind of fast-paced. I mean, the club wanted to slow it down, which made... Oh, wait. Did that make sense? Yeah, so it made sense to do that, and that's their style. And again, the Viking Raiders... Again, they could oblige them. They could they could do a, a faster pace with the Street Profits. Uh, eventually, Carl Anderson tried to get the sneaky win. Good for you, Carl Anderson. But and then Dawson looked like he pounced. Poor Carl Anderson. Poor Carl. Uh, but eventually, the Viking Raiders do go on to win. I, th I think Carl Anderson hit the pin, actually. 
But I'll tell you what, this is another fun match. This is a surf and turf match. And wow, I'm shocked. And then they go back to uh, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. And they're like, what's behind the door? And then Becky shows up in a Kill Bill outfit. She cuts a promo. Asuka, Asuka, easy peasy. Speaks Japanese except for the easy peasy part. Asuka's so fun. Jeez, I wish she was single too. Because I know, I just learned Io Shirai is dating Eva. Whoa. That's, that'd be interesting. Like, what do you tell your parents when you bring him home? Hi, Mom, this is evil. That's cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then Mojo. Mojo looked in the cage, and Mojo was terrified. So now we're getting a hint as to what's in the cage. I still think it's a skunk. Because he was absolutely terrified. And then Andrade was in the back. Andrade was doing an interview in the back. He was speaking in Spanish. And, and I, I think he was... I have no idea what he was saying. I just heard, Mascarita. I'm like, oh, wait a second. Are we going to have a something versus mask match? Oh, that would be so good. Even if they built it up, I don't care for the Royal Rumble. That would be good. Or... Oh, wait. They could do a champion versus mask match. Like the belt versus mask match at the Royal Rumble. Or they could prolong this and wait until... Ooh, that would be an amazing WrestleMania match. A championship belt versus Masquerita match. Because you know it's not a Cabellos. And I'm probably... Butchering that word, by the way. This is what happens when the only Spanish you learn comes from Triple A. Triple A wrestling, by the way. Like Cerro Miedo. And uh, Hijo de something means son of something. Like Hijo de Vikingo, the son of Viking. I know that. And for some reason, Psycho Clown and Murder Clown just means Psycho Clown and Murder Clown. And Toro means bull. Uh, so then, uh, Rally <laughs> sees what's in the, in the and then Rally comes out for his match. And the job with this, I like this. I like the fact they're keeping it fresh. This time, the job was absolutely terrified and wanted nothing to do with the cage. In fact, Rowan brought said jobber over to the cage. What do you think of that? And. Like, the job was absolutely terrifying. He's like, dude, I don't want to see what's in your cage. I'm terrified now. So, of course, he, well, he didn't see, see what was in the cage the first time. He was just scared of anything. I'll tell you what, if some big guy who looked like Rowan dragged me to see what was in a cage, I'd probably be pretty terrified, too. Rowan eventually squashes said job, drags him to the cage, and I'm like, what's in that cage? Because, like, the next thing you see is the, the jobber's face covered in Red mist? Whoa. They have a skunk that sprays red stuff. I wonder if could actually do that. I don't know. I know for the most part it comes, I think, I've seen skunk spray before. It's like a, it almost has the color of urine. It's a little bit darker though. But the thing with skunks, once you smell a skunk, you see that smell is ingrained in your head. And I've never been sprayed before, but I've seen skunks, and skunks still have skunk smell. Because I know when I drive by skunks, I know where I work, there's a nice open field, like prime skunk habitat. Like, yeah, like every so often, I'm like, oh, wait. There's a skunk here. And people would be like, how do you know? It's like, can't you smell it? It's like, yeah, it smells bad. I'm like, no, that's not bad. That's called skunk. Once you smell skunk, it's one of those things. Uh, it's, it's all in here and in your brain, and, and you know what skunk is. 
And then we have in a great match. I thought this was great. This was a great character match for AJ Styles taking on Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa is getting amazing airtime, even though he's losing. They're featuring Akira Tozawa, and with the exception of this match, he's always been in competitive matches. And this one, AJ Styles is way too much. He beats up Akira Tozawa, then uses the RKO. Oh, AJ Styles knows the move thief. That's awesome on Akira Tozawa. It was a squash match. But this is what I think AJ Styles needed. He needed to go full-blown heel. I feel bad for Akira Tozawa because he's going to squash. But you're, you're, you're losing to AJ Styles with AJ Styles using the RKO. That's a pretty good way to go. And AJ Styles needed that. Oh, um, yeah, the own match was a ham sandwich, but this definitely is a cheeseburger match. Oh, boy. And, and then we get to one of those things that makes me want to oh, stop being a wrestling fan. It was Bobby Lashley and Lana. And there were two saving graces about this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll say three saving graces. One, someone held up a sign like right behind Lana, so when Lana was talking, you can see the sign. Lana loves BBC. And let me tell you, folks, that it's not the British broadcasting company that Lana loves. Big black But yeah, I then I think she turned around, saw that sign because she just like, even she looks, gassed. She looks, she looks aghast, and I think she, <laughs> after that segment, he never saw that sign again. That was funny though. That <laughs> and someone said, "This is the worst town ever." I see you. It was either that or they said this is the worst segment ever. It was pretty good, though. Even Bobby Lashley told Lana to shut up, which is good. And the other saving grace, the third saving grace, is that we have Hawaiian Rusev! Rusev showed up with an open, with an unbuttoned, cut-off sleeve Hawaiian t-shirt, which was really done in front of a green screen, because behind him was the most pristine <laughs> <laughs> touristy late night ad beach you ever saw it literally looked like something like like the green screen from like Gilligan's Island from it was hilariously terrible but oh it saved Rusev though oh and and people are chanting Rusev day it's like it's not going to be Rusev day it's going to be the Bulgarian Bru Rusev I want to see Rusev show up next week on Raw on top of a tank. American, Russian, Bulgarian, Japanese, African, German, Italian, Mexican, Canadian. I don't care what kind. I don't care where they get the tank from. Unless it's from Iran. That's bad. Or Iraq. That's also bad. Any other country's tank, Rusev can, can come driving in on top of. And he will get the biggest pop of the start of the new year. And will probably be remembered until the beginning of next year. And, oh, by the way, a uh, quick little um, news and notes. I'm actually beginning to keep track of stuff. And next year I'm going to have a crushed can award. Where I'll give out crushed cans to various wrestlers, um, tag teams, moments and youtubers and kevin scampoli you're, you're on the very short list for your own crutch can award that's neither here nor there though uh but that was funny though and then we had a 24 7 interview um that was just fun then we had a 24 7 uh interview with with uh our truth and then Liv morgan showed up she's like well if because, uh, obviously, Rusev challenged Bobby Lashley to a match. He Again, match on tank. Driving in on tank. The Bulgarian brute. That would be good. And then, 
So Liv's going to be in Rusev's corner, Bobby Lashley of Lana. Y yeah, whatever happens. Unless there's a live lesbian sex show. I don't care. What happens between those two? Um, then we have Charlotte Flair taking on Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan, change your look. She looked like she almost reverted back to Crazy Mary Dobson, which probably would be pretty good because she just jumped and started to kick the crap out of Charlotte Flair. Which is good. Charlotte deserves that. I mean, it was just like a beatdown on the outside. She eventually got back in the ring, started to try to tear part of the robes, mock Charlotte Flair's robe. Uh oh, can't mock a Flair's robe. That's not good. Um, that was enough for Charlotte Flair to get a wh whistle about her. Beat up Sarah Logan on the outside. I don't even know if this was a match, but I was entertained by it. It's a ham sandwich. And then Drew McIntyre comes out. He takes on, no way, Jose. No way, Jose, who's becoming the like the jobber to the stars now. Uh, Drew, for the most part, beats up, no way, Jose. He goes out, beats up people in the conga line. Yes, 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 yes. And then now he has not only his finisher, the Claymore, but now he uses the Future Shock DDT to set up the Claymore, which just looks vicious. And and then he teased the crowd. is like, do you want to see one more Claymore? And they're like, what? One more time. One more time. One more time. He obliges the crowd. Takes out, uh, gives the Claymore to Noe Jose a second time. And then tosses Noe Jose onto the conga line people. And you could tell that they were kind of local announcement talent people. But I'll tell you what, this was fun. Drew McIntyre is like, dude, I don't see Drew McIntyre beat up everyone. That's that's good. That's best Drew McIntyre. That's a cheeseburger Drew McIntyre. Then we had Sheldon Benjamin take on Alistair Black. This had a lot of potential. Sheldon Benjamin, the wrestler, he's definitely strong. So he was able to pick up uh, Alistair Black when he had him in an armbar. He picked him up into a power bomb position. However, Alistair Black shows he's no slouch at wrestling now either. A very good counter submission wrestler. I like that. Like, not only has he picked up kickboxing, but he's picked up some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. I can respect that. And eventually, again, he does beat up Sheldon Benjamin enough, picks him up by his foot, black mask. After some strikes, um, Alistair Black, of course, wins. But the best part of this match is that Murphy came out, he jumped Alistair Black, beat him up, took him to the outside, put a knee right, I think the back of the chair, right against Alistair's face, kneed the chair, chair hit face, and Alistair Black got knocked out. So this is not over. This is good. Overall, I'll tell you what, I'm going to upgrade it. This was a good cheeseburger. That's mainly on the strength of Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy, he's doing what he's told to, but he's doing it in a way where he's putting himself over, which is really good. And then we get to the main event. So we have, so we have the Architects of Pain. I should copyright that. I give WWE a copyright violation. So we have the Architects of Pain, as I've dubbed them. Seth Rollins, Akam Resort, taking on Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and the Big Show! Because it's the Big Show! It's a really big show tonight. I forget the rest of his theme song. But for the most part, Big Show, when the match starts, he just gets in the ring, he starts throwing Seth Rollins around like a ragdoll. That's so good. Then eventually, Big Show tags out, he tags Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens gets beat up by AOP. They also isolate AOP. Uh, Samojo gets cheap shotted out of the ring, so he's not allowed to enter. Eventually, the Big Show gets back in. And then Seth ruins the whole moment by bringing a chair. And we got a fell. A death to finish, baby! The good guys win.
but they got hit by a tail. A man, good. And then it was a semi beatdown for a while until the Big Show kind of regained. He gave uh, Seth Rollins the weapon of weapon, the WMD punch, whatever it is. That's like he should like choke slammed him and did like the leg drop on Seth. That would be even better. But we got to sell folks a dusted cheeseburger. And I'll tell you what, I was actually pretty entertained by this Raw. If this is what's to come for the entire year, more importantly, if they can keep up this momentum for the entire year, I think things will turn around for for Monday Night Raw and the WWE. Um, I'm still kind of down and depressed about my copyright violations. But I'll tell you what, if the WWE dare uses the architects of pain, they should get a copyright violation too. But, well, with all that being said, um, so it's my schedule for the rest of the week tomorrow. Tomorrow I get to watch both NWA and Impact Wrestling, so that'll be a double show. Wednesday I have to kind of skip because I have to work that night. Uh, Thursday. Oh, I have to make predictions on Thursday. I just realized that. So Thursday I'll be making my Impact pay-per-view hard to kill, I think, is this Sunday. Saturday I get to Tranquilo. Because this is weird, because NXT UK is going up against... An, so you have an NXT UK pay-per-view going up against an Impact pay-per-view. And I have to work that day. So I have to miss... Well, I have to miss the early one. That's the that's the UK one. So that'll be interesting. I'll, I'd be interested to know what the draw is for that. But that's it.